Let's just hold hands together and pray in the spirit. Father, we bless you. Hold hands together and let's just pray so we don't break the flow. Let's hold our hands together and just pray in the spirit. Jebron das kate prahasa da balakatosia. Libron des kete beheri kosha da balakotiata. Zende pros kete hasada bakosha brende kete kete baladabosh. We are praying in the spirit. The Lord is enlarging our capacities. Shapro sede kapaharo sata pratiski dabala. Zebro zazia has kaparo shete pregeto salia kata prende gede gedeosh. Are you praying? Lebanda salaba has kata prende gede bolosh. E bradus kadi a bradus kide bahasa periyate kada. Shabros kete pro hasada bala asabeta katoosh. Shete kato sata prande kato salata prete kete parada bala dabosh. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to pray just one prayer. Say, Father, radically change my life within these minutes, these few minutes that we have. Pray a prayer. Let it be a cry that your life be changed in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Let your word prevail, O oh God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want us to join me as we honor Pastor Bology and his dear wife. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It truly is my joy to be here. And I'm glad that this is a conference for ministers and leaders and um, I was very touched already when I saw um, your pastor pouring out his heart. Truly, you will have to be a good pastor to be this open and this sincere. It's true. There, there, there are certain information that um, because of the cost of getting them, you will not throw them at a platter. Are we together now? It would take a prepared heart to receive the things that you just... While I sat there just watching your pastor minister, my only prayer was that God would cause you to believe the things that he was saying and to apply them in your life. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you just listen to what i'm singing and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you one of the ways that you know you are knowing god is that he satisfies your current hunger and creates a new one you know you have encountered God when you live with a greater level of hunger. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, spend just a few minutes with us. Um, 
if I had my way, I would just sit down and just allow us soak on what Pastor just shared. I sincerely believe that those truths are sufficient to build our lives already if we pay attention to them. Second Peter chapter 1, and when you read from verse 2, the Bible says, Grace and peace, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace is multiplied to a man through knowledge, grace and peace. This kingdom that we live in, please listen, is a kingdom that is activated by knowledge. Are we together now? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. In other words, ignorance can rob you of the experience of the Christ life. In spite of the fact that Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 says, Thanks be to God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So it's a fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. But chapter 4 and verse 18 of Ephesians says, although this is a fact, it says that we can be alienated from the experience of the life of God through the ignorance that is in us. So you must make it a project to contend for enlightenment. It has to be an intentional pursuit as a man of God, as a leader, that by the ministry of the word and the spirit, you come to a point experientially where you have knowledge. Are we together now? Knowledge is very important. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He says, If only you had known the things that pertain unto your peace. But now they are hidden from you. But the Bible says it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It has been given by the Spirit. It has been given. And so let me start up front that we must cultivate a passion. Not... Um, I'm being careful because we're ministers and I'm trying to be sure that my thoughts are well understood. Let me tell you this. It takes more than just reading your Bible to grow in the word. It is possible that that even becomes the reason for your being deprived of light. The scribes and the Pharisees were not ignorant people. They understood the entire Torah, the five books of Moses. Part of the requirements to become among the Sanhedrin council was that you had to know the Pentateuch of heart. Are we together now? So they were not an ignorant people in as much as we know ignorance to be. They had the education of scripture. But Jesus looked at them and saw the deficiency ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth he said from such depart depart because their influence can affect you we can be puffed up with the acquisition of information and just because it is spiritual in context does not mean it is profitable in this bible demons spoke in this bible People spoke from the depravity of their hearts. In this Bible, people spoke as men. In this Bible, people spoke from the standpoint of ignorance. In this Bible, God spoke. In this Bible, those he inspired spoke. In this Bible, men spoke according to different levels of spiritual growth. In this Bible, others even spoke from their backsliding state. Not every part of it just blesses you randomly. That's why the Bible says, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. It's a ministry. 
that he will guide you because he knows that scattered across this scripture, when you go to a shrine, you will see a Bible there. A herbalist can open it and use scriptures to conjure spirits that are not of Christ. Just because the Bible opened does not mean that is... Are we, are we, we are ministers now. So that we don't become arrogant just because we are opening scripture and making contact with the letters. There is the ministry of the spirit that he can guide you into all truth. He can open your eyes to see. Are we blessed? Because you see, your communication, just like your pastor was sharing, your communication as a man of God is influenced by your understanding of scripture. Much more than your desire, your communication of scripture is a reflection. And you can look at any and every assembly and it is a reflection of the spiritual understanding of the man of God and the leaders there. And that also becomes a limitation or otherwise of the possibilities of God that can be hosted in that ministry. God is multifaceted and God is infinite. But the possibilities of God are limited by the level of access that our knowledge grants him. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says, now unto him, speaking about God now who is able to do. So we are not in doubt of God's ability. The Bible already tells us that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, help me, far above all we ask or think. Not above all we ask alone. Your thinking is also a prayer request. Just like your mouth verbalizes a request. So God answers both your asking and you're thinking that it is possible for your mouth to ask something and your thinking tells God it's not necessary again. That God sustains an ability to respond to both a man's words and his thoughts. We ask or think, but that's not even where I'm going. But the Bible says this limitless ability is limited by the power that works within us. That means that all you see that represents God in my life is not all God can do. He is constrained by the limitation that my understanding and my alignment has provided for him. So that if I truly love God, then I will contend to expand through knowledge so that a greater dimension of him can be expressed. A, an entire territory can misrepresent God by the limitation of their understanding of him. Leaders, are we still here? So we must go for knowledge. Knowledge that is profitable. Knowledge that is vetted by the wisdom of the spirit. Not knowledge that is a trend. Not knowledge that is an agreeable um, um, a, a system that has been agreed upon. Much more than that. We need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you this. We must sustain the spiritual flexibility to adjust to what the Bible calls the current speakings of the Spirit. It says, I will not be ignorant to put you in remembrance of this, although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. Say after me, this present truth. What God is doing now there is the now dealings of God with men. Maybe I should just say this very quickly and, and I hope that, that it will bless you. I teach that there are three levels of operating in the anointing. Please listen. We'll talk, we'll talk maybe about the anointing later just to squeeze it in. But when it has to do with the operation of the spirit upon a man, there is the grace and the anointing that is upon you because you are in Christ. You are a believer. Are we together now? Yes. That that measure of the anointing of the spirit experientially 
flowing and working through you because you have now been grafted into Christ. Number two, there is the level of the anointing that is at work in your life on account of the office you occupy. Are we together now? That when God calls a man into an office, an apostolic, a prophetic, a pastoral, evangelistic, etc. That when he calls you there is an engracing, a grace that is invested on account of that office. But the third level is the level that very few people understand. That's why I have a lot of regard and respect for your pastor for sustaining the discernment to host meetings like this. The third level of anointing is the grace that is upon you by reason of being available to be used by God within the context of a season. Just because you are anointed and just because you are called does not mean you will always be featured in the move of God. So you can look at a man and know he has not backslidden. But as far as the current program of God is concerned, for whatever reason he has not pressed in experientially to be used. You will know that there is a grace upon a man that this is God's authorized voice within a territory in that season. When you read the Bible, the Bible says the church in Ephesus, the church in Pergamos, didn't give it a denominational name. This is the assembly of believers accredited by God to speak his purposes across a territory. So God can, by reason of the sacrifice of alignment, God can make up his mind and say within this season, H-I-C-C, I am placing a unique grace to represent my speakings across this territory. Let me tell you, no man will sustain the power to shut that voice. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he commanded a territory, hear ye him. Jesus went up the mountain, a crowd followed him. He went to the desert, a crowd followed him. Because a verdict had come that the entire creation should hear him. When God declares that you be heard, no man can shut you. No radio station. No. It's true. There are many things in my head, Pastor. I don't even know where to... to We need to respect the power of the speakings of God. You see, the anointing does not follow men. The anointing follows the speakings of God. If you embrace his speakings, the anointing will come to you as though it was directed to you. But the anointing really does not follow a man. The anointing follows the word of God. Where the word of God goes, the anointing is the agency that gives life and power to the word of God. So when God speaks, that's where his anointing is. If you stand where his word is and receive that word, then you also partake of the grace, the anointing that causes that word to pass. Then the anointing will now be like a movie director, begin to create the human figures that will act out what must make that word come to pass. Second Corinthians, let's look at something. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastors conferences like this are times where we truly encounter the word and just allow it to bless us. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Please put up that scripture and let me have your attention. I want to show you something. That for someone, this is a, a revelation that will change your life and your ministry forever. Read with me. One, two, go. Stop, stop. Don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. The first three words or four words says what? One, to read. And God is able. That is a revelation. To be able means it is within your power. Are we together? If your pastor looks at you as a student, for instance, and says, how much is your school fees? And he says, 100,000. Your pastor says, okay, consider it done. He is able, meaning he has the wherewithal. It is within his jurisdiction to solve that problem. So when the Bible says God is able, that means it is within his power. 
he does not have to outsource it from another system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God is able to make all grace. How many? All. Now, the, the Bible never said God is able to make grace. He's able to make that means grace like love has dimensions. There is only one dimension of grace that culminates to unmerited access. That is not the only dimension of grace. Grace, in my definition, is every good and perfect gift that comes from above and is routed through the office of the Christ. That any spiritual investment available to men that is only accessible through the Christ is called grace. That means the anointing is grace. Prosperity is grace. Are we together? Faith is grace. That every spiritual virtue that is can be released to enable the believer walk in the fullness of God's life. Only access through the office of the Christ is called grace. And there are different dimensions. Now this scripture will make sense to you. If he just said grace, then it means he expects us to believe that there's just one dimension. But just like there is the length, the breadth of love, grace also has dimensions. Are, are, you, are, are you with me? Prosperity is grace. So the Bible says God is able to make all grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means, look, this is like the dry bones of Ezekiel. That these dimensions of grace are scattered. God can coordinate them. That means if it is finances that you need, he can make all grace. He can call it like the dry bones started locating themselves to form an army. They were there but in disarray. So the prophet was able to make all bones abound towards that body so that it became an army. So when God speaks, his anointing begins to move men. And he, God knows by his wisdom the tools you need to excel. He knows you need human forces, strong men. And so the grace begins to direct men. They don't even know why they came to your church. God is able to make all grace. That's why I took out time to let, it is within his power. The Bible says, do not withhold good from a man when it is within your power. God is able to make all grace, all favor. Are we together? All relationships, all prosperity. God knows that the kind of ministry he has given you, you are located in a territory that will require an extreme demonstration of the spirit to break the hardness of the heart. He can make all grace. That unique operation of the spirit this scripture changed my life. All grace. It is on the basis of this that you walk knowing that there is all sufficiency at work. Hmm. Are we together? That means, for instance, let's assume that I was going to wear a suit and for, for whatever reason, I left my luggage in the airport. Getting here now, I don't have to be afraid if I have enough money. Is that true? Because I can still remedy for that weakness. It is within my power to get into a shop and buy another suit and wear. And you will never know that I forgot my luggage. So in God's mind, it makes no difference where you are. And it makes no difference the circumstances. It is within his power to route through any channel. The, let me tell you this. It is because many believers truly do not know God. I hope you know that the goal of an encounter is to create conviction. And that is the foundation of Bible faith. Believing is not faith. No, believing is the process of faith. Faith is the action you take based on the conviction you have about God and the integrity of his word. He allows you to vet him. That's why he gave you a compendium of his integrity. Check it. Look at my dealings with men through the ages. Now you be God, almighty God, you know be, you're not a man. Now you be God 
Almighty God. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I have to find someone and round up. You will honestly not believe I've not even gone to my notes. I'm, I've, we've not even started. I've not, quite honestly, I've not even gone close. I don't even know how we got here. I'm just trying to think how. You are not a blessing in ignorance. There are two things that if you don't have, you are not a blessing. One, if you are ignorant, you are not a blessing. Two, if you are not seriously anointed and to allow the effulgence of that anointing to bless people, you are not a blessing. Two things I know that are responsible for being a blessing. The richness of the word in you and a lavish operation of the spirit not just for the show of it it is the only way people are blessed if they could be blessed without god they would not need him the word and the spirit is the god factor in you if you take these two out there is nothing god in you again i hope you understand that the 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 word of god and the spirit of god does not add to who you are they make you all that you are Take away the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. Any man alive is only dead. He really is. <sighs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we need knowledge. Say I need knowledge. It's true. As leaders we need knowledge. It's amazing my brothers and my sisters. What can happen to your life when the right knowledge comes. It says, and you shall know the truth. It says, and the truth shall make you. Make you free. The truth does not only reveal light. It shows you how to apply it. You buy the ingredients to make fried rice. It doesn't guarantee I will make it. The ingredients are within my vicinity. But the combination, I still need that knowledge. When he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you, guide you, and tell you, I know why your finances is not rising. He said, Lord, but I'm an innocent believer. Uh, the Bible says, since I was young, he said, ah, the kingdom does not operate that way. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. And that knowledge brings you in a position where you begin to program yourself literally for prosperity. I am obsessed about spiritual knowledge. I want to know what I do not know that is responsible for where I am and by implication responsible for keeping others where they are. Because you see, you impart your ignorance too to others and as a result, you help program their stagnation. So many times when you are asking the Lord, to punish a lot of people. He doesn't answer because you are part of those to be punished. When Eve violated the order, God never came to Eve because there is a system. There is an order. He came to the man. Adam, what have you done? Adam said this woman. Then he went to her. Woman, what have you done? Then they went to Satan. That, that's, a, that's a talk for another day. I would have shown you how man gave his authority to Satan. It's a mystery in the spirit. Every time you blame something, you transfer your right of ownership to it. That's how Satan got it. Every time you give an excuse and blame something for why you are, spiritually there is a transference. You submit yourself to the authority of that thing. If you blame poverty, if you blame the government, you submit yourself to the influence and the limitation. So the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. It's true. This is not just some spiritual hype. It's true. These are spiritual laws. That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
your verbalizing your dominion and your position is not just a spiritual way of feeling high it's a system of enforcing your position hmm. they know not neither will they understand psalm 82 and verse 5 they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high then verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes die like mere men fall like one of these princes you can believe you will never fail in life and know you are not copying a man of God it's a revelation God is able to make all grace his jealousy protects his word upon my life like a man protecting his bride and even if the bride is wrong they will settle it at home but as far as that occasion is concerned there is no reason why he will embarrass any responsible man will not shout at his wife in public that's why there is an occasion for you to meet him with God where you are built up where there is the pruning of the spirit his jealousy protects your life who doesn't like you or likes you has nothing to do with your victory i'm telling you this it is good news because we live in a world that is full of people who believe you don't deserve to rise but god hicc but god hmm. do you believe what i'm sharing as leaders imagine pastor a leader carrying this mindset that god is able to make all grace god is able to make all grace okay lord what do i do we need a building god is able to make all grace the building is not in heaven it's king ah, fearful is the man whose grace something draws me to you you will never get the testimony if you don't believe it And God is able to make all grace. And God, get out of that life of hardship. Don't convince yourself because that because you have stayed there for a long time, it means it's the will of God. There is ease that comes with understanding. Knowledge lifts you beyond the vicissitudes of men. If you don't have this light, you would think men are bragging. It's the truth. Listen, Pastor, did you know that what most people all favor favor very few people have really experienced favor favor is never favor until it is repeated if it ever happens once it was just breakthrough mm -mm, mm -mm. favor is a repetition anything around the environment programmed by the spirit to make sure you rise your latest in office to meet your anger that you I know first so for me go lay out of the left line. You were sharing. I was in your time. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you are not born again. It's true. Who bears the excellency of this life that we claim? What message are we taking to an unbeliever? I know whom I believe. You have to insist that this year that people will see ah, oh. I share your pastor's burden and I know let me tell you my brothers and my sisters these things I share with you are my realities and my experiences. They say to you who are keep open there is no limit to what the spirit of the living God can do. When you look at a man who has received the grace and the mercy of God, you will wonder and even be annoyed. Nothing will add up. You know, in God's economy, one plus one is whatever he says. Whatever he chooses as the answer. If he calls it infinity, so it is. If this
this is all we share i hope that you've received something but let me just share with you do, do i have up to 10 minutes will that be fine okay well that's the time okay <sighs> hebrews chapter 3 let's discuss scripture hebrews chapter 3 and verse 4 let me just build on a few things and then we'll pray can you pray in the spirit while you're just seated just just absorb this truth because your life is changing i'd like you to see your ministry see yourself stepping into a new dimension Your life is changed. You are immersed in gratitude. You will never recover. You will not need to tell people came for him like this. The deeds will be clear. No man truly meets with God and goes back the same. There is more in you than It's true. Sitting by spirit from level power, level of peace. Lord, but the Lord in my eye and what I saw. Through the the Lord tell me a few people that them meet the grace needs to be activated upon their last and where you I stretch my hand now, in the name that is both names. I'm seeing the number 33, 33 people. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. Help them please. Let that anointing in the name of Jesus. I healing ministry one of the lost to the see Lord now I shift to a new nation a new a place a grave seated you can be black came here changed please sit if I teach the few minutes and word if you are a leader it's not just by appointment there must be a factor you can't just be a leader and direct people just intellectually no and Haskadash Karuzia Heba Shela Kauskadash Mapatosh Priya Shabru Hasud. I am moving you. I am moving you. I am moving you. Shuzeka Parusa Haskeba Elekos Kabarakos Senekata. I am moving you. Taking away the limits from your life. Taking away the limits from your life. Taking away it's from the name of Jesus. I claim it so. Please sit down. Please give us that scripture again. Goodness. My dear, please stand up. This lady, I'm seeing an angel of the Lord who looks like here on this telling me it's taking you dimension hands up new level the holy ghost tell you walk in the strange level of the wisdom of god what gonna i do you from any but in the name of jesus i declare that your life change by the spirit free how please publish just show you 
who do not walk every place is built by something ever find that God is built for all let, let God's system in a ministry is building God creates a threat place there is a called the law of territory for you shall must have a system around you that is consistent with the laws of that territory. I give you an instance. If you humans were not to live in water, are we going to get that? That's a territory. So if you want to live in water, you must piece together all of the to create a, a simulation and you have to create a pipe of the element of a and so in the air all the laws of physics that had to be put together to make sure that a plane fights a bird does the rock. it just because it was so designed now God designed that inside of his kingdom you must carry a body that here do not have to carry body or on creation, you are an Egyptian. So, word we need to do this. The word came flesh. It subscribed to that soul. together now. Then he dwelt among us. And the Bible says, We held his glory. Even as of the Father, he was full of grace and of truth. So, so by his kingdom, that generation on the list sort of, I hope you understand that dominion with is not dominion. Dominion together now. We were members. We were elected. Our partakers, our dominion. Is shared dominion. That means that God still remains the sovereign Lord. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. The walls, the systems, the cosmos, and they that dwell therein. So it's a fact that the earth still and will always belong to the Lord. But he has so designed that dominion in this realm, listen carefully, dominion in this realm walks through the ministry of men. I, I want you to know that men are a ministry. There is what is called the ministry of men. And if you do not know this dimension, you will never truly reign in life. Every house is built by some... That means there must be a faith behind every city in this earth. But at the back of it, when you look at HICC, you see the man, Pastor Gido, together. But the Bible says, behind man, God in his church. Understand this system. Because many believers, especially pastors, and, and we, we need to strike a balance. Most people do not understand the place of honor and understanding authority, the spiritual organogram created by God. Even in the building of the new Jerusalem, God respected the ministry of men. The foundation of the new Jerusalem was built on the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Heaven, heaven, Satan is not there, remember. Demons are not there, yet God still respected the ministry of men in building the foundation of the new Jerusalem. Every blessing, listen carefully, comes to you from God through men to you. Listen carefully. Every blessing, I don't care what it is, it comes from men to you. Talk back to me that God through men to me. One more time. From God. Through men to me. Let me have two gentlemen. Can I use you? Please come, sirs. Just stand here, my brother. Stand here. Come up. You stand here and, and stand there. Are we Bible students? 
I have to conserve time, but watch this. This is God, for instance, Almighty. And this is Saul, the king, about to lose his throne. Are we together? Now, God decides to find a place for King Saul. Are we Bible students? We should be. And David is in wilderness. Who is David? Come, David. Huh, this really wants to be. Are we together? Now watch this. This guy is in the wilderness having visions of the throne. And it is the will of God that his vision should come to pass. And this is Saul, the rejected king. But a man comes in between as Samuel and refuses the will of God from coming to pass. God had decided that David is going to be the next king. I have rejected Saul. I said, that man in the wilderness, not seen he could, because a man used God. This has come. Is it if I shared? When we learn this, Rise in want as if you held a child. It's good to be humble because many people make a lot of noise over something small. And the result will always show. So God comes down to negotiate with man. Samuel, how long shall you weep? Seeing that I have rejected Saul as king, I beg you, take on your horn, go to the house of Jesse. Don't leave this guy suffering. As mighty as I am, I will ask what you repent. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. We are Bible students. So, God convinces Samuel. And then Samuel agrees with God and takes on the horn. Otherwise, this guy's destiny, regardless of the will of God, is at the mercy of a man. Now, listen very carefully. I know that we are believers and I'm one too. But what God is giving us in this conference, thanks to your pastor, is called spiritual intelligence. Are we together now? Yes. So he takes on his horn and goes to the house of Jesse and Samuel is about to make a mistake and God corrects him because had he anointed Eliab, that was it. Otherwise, God, if it didn't matter, God would not correct him. A man is about to anoint the wrong head and God says, you want to make this thing difficult for me again. Have you ever wondered why God said, is there anything too hard. That state not even be associated with at all. It's a pastor's conference. We won't talk like this in the evening, but for now, you must grow. And so Samuel anoints David, and from there, the rest is history. David now becomes king. Next example. Jesus himself is about to come to the earth, but he is stranded as the word. The word is stranded in the heavenlies until an angel comes to meet a virgin. He started searching for virgins all around. When he found one, he said, Madam, the same scene Zechariah committed was the same sin Mary committed. One person was punished, another person received an explanation. Two of them asked how it will happen, paraphrasing. And for one, he said, no, you are a priest. You should know more than this. And because of that, we shut your mouth. And for Mary, a naive young virgin, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And then the angel said, let me explain. You deserve an explanation. Because if you refuse the rigor of looking for another virgin to agree, I, I rather humble myself and explain. Sit down. Sit down. I will tell you why it is 
difficult for God to replace men. Because many of us think it's so easy. God uses another person. God says, no, I will fix this one. I, I will show you the technology behind God's mercy. See, it is God. Be with God. Quietly. Give me on. Are we together now? After this meeting, you should, you should find a way of going to sow into your pastor and say, you changed my life. This is it. I mean it sincerely. Otherwise, we're just hypocrites here. We're just doing a lot of church lies. There are things that cannot be bought with money. They are truly priceless. Virtues of the spirit. You will see what will happen when you go back to your churches. Or when you go back to your various meetings. You will marvel and wonder. My goodness. You will hold your mic and say, let us pray. And, 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 and not even be able to pray. Say, God, what is this? And God, what happens when we rise to speak? Think that is a grow. If you are a true life, grow. So, a word agrees. Shall these things be? And he said, Power of the higher Lord overshadow, etc. Et and she becomes pregnant. Watch that. And she gives a that word of God. Do you agree with me? Seed is the word of God in human body. Now, but watch this. Jesus himself as the word of her faith is a cloak held her tears. The word of God, your living logos. Walked under a close heaven, and his heaven will not open, even as the word, until he met a strange man called John the prophet. A man that had been trained. That man sacrificed his whole life to find Jesus. Listen carefully. Every house, remember the scripture we are dealing with, is built by what? Some man. Mm. Ministries don't just be alone because you mean you need men attempts to the all sovereignty of you are right but you need men because a system of inclusivity is a big job round of And he's a man called John Baptist. A prophet. Him was not his I hope you know. John was a prophet. Baptist strategy. A secret identity the Christ. He had Jesus Baptist. God of him than any other person. And Jesus. And behold Lamb. Of what literally take away the sins of what I am not with you. I will the Bible says, Yes, I am not worth on even the thoughts of your supply of soft to be the word means this is an announce is the way system of, of growing in kingdom. Period. I need a mystery to put on my heaven. Oh dear. Just let me finish. So just submit to the leadership of the thought of John. John, water. God is the heaven watching. As soon as it comes out, the blood is heaven. The heavens are who? The open. Holy. That was the day the Holy Ghost to what was the day. Found John that is heaven. Found John before that would be his heavens were open. And his heads open this. And John on the brings Jesus out. A voice God himself validate his principle. This is my above who was before. God is speaking. So God did not fit or he was in. This God now, we can find an 
application. But what do you say about God speaking directly? This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Jesus ever studied mystery without that experience, he would have been so scriptural. It's just challenging our minds. Guess who the first person was when Jesus finished fasting? Talk to me. The fasting should drive Satan. Satan should not be in that vicinity after fasting for 40 days. The word with the spirit and a fast on top and the first person that shows up is Satan. And he's not shaking under the anointing. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Don't just be excited for nothing. Follow, just open your heart and receive. Now, then the Bible says, Satan said, Jesus, hold my hands. And Jesus held his hands and took him to a city. Is it in your Bible? He took him up the mountain. Jesus, full of the spirit, the word, with fast on top for 40 days. And Satan holds him and he's not moved. Let me tell you, it is not really the presence of God that scares Satan. It is the man that comes out of the presence of God that scares Satan. Wow. How do I explain this to you? Watch this. Your pastor prays for the sick. Is that true? Now watch this. While your pastor is preaching, the sickness, which is a spirit, is also listening to him and does not go. Waiting for him to ask it to go. Listen, are, are we together now? Let's, let's leave this. Let's, let's just talk on something else now. Listen. Because my brothers and my sisters, it is on the strength of this revelation we reign in life and in ministry. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not magic. There is what you know and hell knows that you know it. Jesus, I know. When we look at him, we see the spiritual illumination that empowers him. For, same for Paul, but who are you? These guys just use zeal without knowledge. And the spirit pounced on them. I'm trying to show you the all-surpassing excellency of men. To reign in life, you need God and you need men. You don't need God alone. You need men. Now watch this. Can I give you one more example of the ministry of men? Jesus, pastor, is hanging on a cross. Salvation. Hanging on a cross. And the body would not come down. But the prophets prophesied that he would be buried in a virgin tomb. And resurrection needed to happen. I hope you know without the resurrection, the, 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 the new creation is not even there. It was the resurrection, not even the death. The resurrection. By the glory of the Father. Now, Jesus is hanging on the cross. And no angel could bring his body down. But there was a man called Joseph or Arimathea. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. He was not just any man. He was a rich man. Please sit down. If Joseph of Arimathea was poor, Jesus will remain on the cross there. Your Jesus, we're not talking about a found. Uh, please sit down, please sit down, please sit down, please sit down, please sit down. Please sit down. Remember, you will need to go for a break. Hallelujah. The body of the Son of the Living God is hanging on earth, and no man to call it down. The same God that raised the dead is now on the cross. Watch this. And a rich man goes to Caesar and says, you know me. We know our business concerns. You know what will happen if you don't attend to me. And he goes, listen, this is not just about money. It's about the power and the influence it brings even in the gospel. So prosperity played a role in your salvation. 
No wonder Satan fights it. No wonder Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Joseph of Arimathea and Caesar says, where is the grave? He says, I have a virgin tomb. I have that much influence to have a virgin tomb. They will keep him there. And that was where they kept Jesus. And I can imagine heaven rejoicing while they brought that body down. He was never supposed to resurrect on the cross. It was when they put him down. Remember how he resurrected? The angels came. They could roll the stone but not touch the body. They rolled the stone, sat on it. And Jesus resurrected by the glory of the Father. And when he came, he proved to us, listen carefully, the gospel, uh, this is not even what I'm saying, but let me uh, just use the opportunity to strengthen what your pastor is saying. As soon as Jesus, I mean, the resurrection was announced, the God's men said, truly, let's confess. We saw this with our eyes. This man is powerful. They brought out money and said, keep quiet with the gospel. We bring out finance. How many of you? Let's bribe you into saying they stole his body. And then he, he said, what of those higher than us? How do he said, don't worry. Money will also close the gates. And the Bible says till today, that story is believed. Money as a padlock closed the gate for the gospel. Did you, see what I, did you hear what I said? That you use money and shut the door and locked it and said, Jesus, what do you think will open it? This is a world where God needs men. And God is not ashamed of his need for men. What is man? This is how I quote it. What is in man? God, you are not dull. Can't you throw away man and use something else? And God says, I will fix him. God, look at what we do. God, I will still fix him. It's cheaper to fix him than to try to do another new work of creation. God says it's cheaper to fix man. Yet men ignore men. To the point that your true test for loving God is what you do with man. Not what you do with money necessarily. Not even what you do with... What you do with man matters to God. Please listen carefully. That God can anoint you to be a great preacher. And the resources to make that happen is in the hands of a man. And God can instruct him to bless you. He can choose to disobey. And you will suffer for his disobedience. Imagine how many of you have been authorized to be favored, but the men holding the resources out of their will decided that I will shift that prophecy to April. That's why something must happen to them to make it January. This something is what is called God is able to make all grace. There is a kind of pressure that only him can put to release what needs to be released. Man, watch this. This is your dear pastor. It was in God's heart for you to be blessed. But if your pastor as a single man chose that, Lord, I, I cancel wine press, that's it. Look at all these lives at the mercy of one man's agreeing or disagreeing. So much so that when he wants to touch Israel, he finds Jacob. He doesn't find Israel. He finds Jacob and rejoices over Jacob because of Israel in him. Please listen carefully. Look how many great people have been used by God to change and transform our lives. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the word. Yet we sit down under their ministry and confess that it was when we sat under their ministries our lives changed. So what about the Holy Ghost that we had? What about the word that we had? Listen, when you, and if Jesus appears to you now, 
it will not be a replacement for needing men. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. The Bible records that a man called Saul of Tarsus, he obtained a letter. Are we Bible students still? He obtained a letter from the high priest to go and persecute the church. And on his way going to Damascus, the Bible says a light appeared. Please give it to us. Let's see verse 3. A light appeared and knocked him down. And then a voice says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Verse 4. And then he says, who art thou, Lord? Verse 5. And he says, you cannot kick against the pricks. Verse 6. And he says, um, the people were astonished. And then he says, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee. Who is talking? God, I finished my own part. I refer you back to men to continue. Jesus, why will you need a man when you've just seen Jesus? And Jesus says, okay, you have called me Lord, but a man will continue. Go and wait. Next verse. Next verse, please. Verse 7. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, etc., etc. Let's go to verse 9. Let's jump very quickly. Saul, he, he was in the house of Judah, if you remember, for three days, not eating, not drinking. What was he waiting for? A man. The opening of his eyes was at the mercy.